the punchline for me is our North Star has never changed. Our seasons change, but our North Star, our primary life calling does not change. I don't believe it does. The assignments do, but the calling doesn't. Our North Star, bro, is I am called to build God a resting place, to build God a house. What does that look like in my perspective? Bro, I believe that I am a David in this generation. I'm called to build God a house that we adore him day and night with full-time singers, full-time musicians, and full-time, he had he called them gatekeepers, but administrative staff. And how did David fund this? Number one, he funded it all out of his own pocket, but number two, he funded it from his business exploits out there in the marketplace. And so, you know, thank God we've had a, a handful of really cool like ministry centers or day and night prayer and worship things. And I love all of them. I'm friends with most all of them and I love everyone, but they're all being built off of, I call it the the missionary budget. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Which like, you know, live by faith type and of thing. Did that even exist prior to the last like 2000 years? Like back then was there, was that even a thing like a missionary budget or like I'm going to do like they were like fighting battles running a kingdom a physical kingdom like it's just crazy i just never even thought about it you, you so may have like, more insight but i was like man did that i mean even for exist me before? like it, the again i'm not knocking anybody because i love everyone and i'm friends with most of them but the biggest thing is when david described him wanting to build a house for god he used two words that are just powerful together he said we're going to build god an exceedingly magnificent house and we are going to do this by generating a ton of wealth from the marketplace. Yeah. Right. And so exceedingly magnificent that, in my opinion, takes a lot different budget than just like, hey, everybody, please sow your seed and yeah. give an offering. It's like, no, no, no. We want the best of the best of the best. So let's go generate wealth in the market to fund and fuel God's house, which then his presence funds and fuels what we're doing in the marketplace. And it's this beautiful perpetual like uh, ecosystem that one feeds the other, one fuels the other and the one fuels the other. So that's 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 what I'm on right now, bro. Yeah. A lot of people are like, oh, Rick, transition and this and that. Yes, I did because I'm still heading to my North Star. Um, we're just out a different making some money of, right it's quick. It's like the triathlon and you're on the, uh, 100%. you just got off the swim. I'm, I'm on the I, bike yeah, now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. That's good. Yeah, so you, you still kept it the same but was that a difficult transition even like that's an identity shift and i think that's big for people you teach people even getting into business you said you had some new people as well that are like they're fresh and that's a difficult transition sometimes to go from anything to something different whether it's job to business business to a different business ministry to business what would you what's like your top skill sets or top ways that you're able to transition really well and shed whatever identity you had now the best thing would be that you have an identity in christ it's very difficult to not catch a little bit of your identity through the things that you do and if that gets taken away you sell a business you leave a job you leave ministry sometimes there can be a shedding what was your experience with that and what would you say to other people for me the the identity this is a number of years ago god began to work on my wife and i me specifically because it was not the case for her when i first started like I said, coming out the gate in the worship world as a teenager and then literally like almost overnight going from I just graduated high school to now I'm on stages in stadiums with all the biggest voices and thought leaders in in the church world. It was it was a big, quick shift over. And obviously in those days as a young man, my identity was in you know, I want to get known. I want to be famous. I'm, I want to be the guy. And so from that day, I feel like in those early days, God was already preparing me. And I can say, honestly, dude, after a few years of God dealing with my heart, as far as identity goes, my identity was not in, I am a worship leader. My identity was a hundred percent. I am a son of God. And there's one thing we're talking about David here a little bit earlier. It's interesting because David, he slayed giants and he was an adulterer, right? Yeah. Like he was a businessman 
and he was struggling at fatherhood at times. And so for me, if I look at the life of David, you don't look at David and go, bro, you were an adulterer, you were a terrible dad, or you were rich, you were famous, you slayed giants. David's identity wasn't in the good or the bad of his life. I believe David's identity was in Psalm 27, four. One thing have I asked, one thing do I seek? Basically, I want one thing out of this life. I wanna dwell in your house, gaze on your beauty, and inquire in your temple. The, the, the nutshell of that all, I want to have relationship with you. And so for me, my identity wasn't in how bad I've blown it or how, how much accolades I've got to, to be a part of in the worship world. I was already in the place in my heart. I'm a son. And if that means I'm a toilet scrubber, I'm a son. And if it means I'm a uh, well-known worship leader, I'm a son. If it means I'm a businessman, I'm a son, right? So I think Thankfully to God, he's already been killing that in me for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. So for the, for us, for my wife and I, the transition publicly wasn't hard. Um, it was more so just the preparation behind the scenes, getting ready for the transition. Yeah. Because I could even see that you weren't posting a ton of content before that. You yeah, I took, I took like off. a year off of social. So was there a little bit of like back and forth on, on or were you just like, all right, guys, we're going into hunker down mode. One year from now, we're going to be producing content about business. No, you know what? It, that's a great question. So for me, it was literally, we're going bananas on social. Social media is a grind if you're doing it right. <laughs> I, I had posted like nonstop for six years, built a pretty large audience, and I just got tired. Like, I'm taking a break. Our businesses were already running in the background. My ministry that I was still doing at the time was still just running. I just took a break. I just took a year off from social, like whatever. And then whenever we were like, we should talk about business publicly, we just turned turn the machine back on. And now the content shifted from all Bible, all you know, Christian, whatever, ministry stuff. Now it's just mostly business. Yeah. With a Bible, you know, center. So Yeah. And the more you study Bible through the business lens, it's crazy how much you get it's from crazy. it. crazy. Even if you li start getting into business and then you start listening to sermons, I started looking at people like, are, how are you guys not seeing this right now? Don't you understand that this is exactly, because you just put on a whole new like set of eyes <laughs> yeah. and, and it unleashes it for you. One of the things I love about Joseph's story, and there's things about David you said that I love things about what he's done as well but in joseph's story looking at the kind of end of it is he was able to look back and see how each piece kind of fit together and how it was god's plan the whole time though his wasn't awesome worship leader it was a little bit more junky than that but it was like he was able to see seasons that felt like they were pointless in our eyes and always saw that god was involved with it a lot of people i think the identity piece you said was really good for people to go I messed it up, I lost all my money, or I invested wrong, or I sat in a job too long, and I didn't go after my dreams, right? They say that the most wealthy place is the graveyard. People die at 25 and buried at 75.